Hello, it's Jack, and welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. I've come to work this morning on this beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day here, isn't it? It's funny that. Always a beautiful day. Hmm? Oh, what is this? I hear you shout. Don't get too excited. I'm not going to be going through this in this episode, but it is indeed a wonderful 1991 Jaguar XJS, which is running a fantastic V12. Look at that. Only developing 280 brake horsepower. Anyway, this is from the new DLC pack that was released on the 20th of uh, October on Steam for the PC, which I purchased and I've yet to showcase the vehicles in that DLC. Today, however, we're going to be going through the engine stand. Now, before you click away and say, oh, I know all about the engine stand, I know everything there is to know about the engine stand, trust me. I don't think you'll know everything about the understand because I still am learning about this and I've been playing this for a long, long time. So stick with me and hopefully you'll learn something new. So when we talk about the engine stand, it's in the extension of the garage and it's, it's here. And basically allows you to put engines and engine blocks on there and build new engines, repair engines, uh, you know, engines from scratch, you name it, you can do it. So a great example. So we've got a car here that has an engine in it and we want to, let's just say this was knackered and we want to take it out and repair it on the stand, which is fine. First, the first thing we need to do is disa d disable, we need to disable it. We need to kick it in the nuts. No, what we need to do is take everything off the engine that's connected to it in terms of connected to the chassis or whatever. In, in car mechanic, it's the gearbox on the back end of the car or sometimes on the front end of the car disconnect the be uh, the beer box yes get, disconnect the gearbox and the beer box as well if you like disconnect the gearbox and any drive shafts from the vehicle okay you may also need to disconnect some of the downpipes on the exhaust system so let me just show you real quick it kind of tells you what you need to disconnect if you try and take out the engine and it's not disconnected or there's other bits and pieces that need to be done first it does generally tell you so what we're looking at here is we need to take off the gearbox which will be here uh, which is also connected to the drive shaft down to the back end and we will take off these two uh, exhaust uh, down pipes here and then we would drain all the fluids as in the oil and the coolants and all that stuff and then take the engine out of the car and push it onto the uh, onto the engine stand Make sure you drain the fluids, otherwise you'll get the environmental health people coming by and giving you a slap on the wrist for 50 credits and you don't want that. So here we just want to pull the engine out of the car. Perfect, engine disappears. And then we, the engine now is inventory, that was a 6P, so we have it in inventory here, that 6P, you see? And then we can go and shove that onto the engine stand. And there's a, the only way you can do that is to come to the engine stand and say, install an engine please, and it's a 6P. And you can also see the condition uh, of all the different parts. Now, do not be mistaken about when it says 100%. 100% does not mean that the engine is complete. 100% means that whatever parts are on it are at that 100%. Okay? Just so you know. And then we would click on this, and it would be installed onto the stand. And then we can work on that engine, just as you could in the car. The benefit being, you can get really close up and dirty with it. And you can also rotate it, which makes it a lot easier. The major benefit is you don't have to keep going on that ramp up and down like a freaking yo-yo. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And I'm sure most of you knew that already. Most of you probably experimented and done some jobs and all the rest of it where you've had to take the engine out of the car or at least you thought it would be easier okay if you were to do an engine swap on this vehicle let's say this was a knackered old 6p and you wanted to create a new engine and this will take a great engine it will take uh, a variety of engines but it will take also the v8 overhead valve mag so let's say you wanted to put the mag into this engine take this one out and put a mag in okay so literally all you're going to do is go to that engine stand uh, and you're going to create uh, the mag engine. So you're going to come here, instead of saying add engine, you're actually going to say create a new engine. You would find the mag in the list of engines, which is somewhere along here. Fine. And then you would click on that, and then business as usual. You'd then go to add a part, and you'd put in the V8 overhead valve C engine block, which I don't have, which I'd have to purchase, and then I would rebuild that engine. Okay? And then I would take it off the stand and go and shove it in uh, into the car over here. Bear in mind, if the engine is not on the swap list, it will not go into the vehicle. It's as simple as that, my friends. So don't make that mistake of thinking, oh, I want to put a huge V12 in this. It will not take a V12 because it's not built for a V12. Simple as that. Now, something else you may or may not know. 
and I'm not sure if it, there's a couple of bugs in the system but we're going to highlight those now this is a customer car okay so we've taken the customer car from the customer calls that come in okay it's not a it's not a story order and for those that don't know what a story order is the story orders are highlighted here in blue saying story order and they don't have a time limit on them and they also have the whole full backstory and all that good stuff they're much more uh, enjoyable to do than just these basic story orders that have a time limit on them uh, before they expire and you can't take them any further however in saying that excuse me i've still got a bit of flu i'm sniffing a little bit in saying that however these are still good money earners and they still get you experience okay but to progress through the game you really need to take the story orders. anyway i digress so this came in as a story order right, sorry as a just a normal customer order and with that being said of course i then get all the jobs that i have to do on this particular vehicle now I've already disconnected the engine on this one because I'm trying to make a, a point of, of uh, one of the issues with the engine stand okay so I've done a couple of diagnostics on it and I've figured out that the ignition core needs to be replaced so I've highlighted it using you know the general highlighting tool by clicking it here and this little uh, star goes goes blue so when I look at the engine I can see that is the spark plug uh, sorry the coil that I need to replace now let's say there was a lot of work to be done on this engine all the bottom end and everything else I thought well you know what I've got a brand new engine stand why don't I use that engine stand to help me fix all the parts on the engine it'll be so much easier than going up and down with the lifter all the time well let me just show you something quite simple so that you're aware of it you don't make the same mistake that I've made we're going to move this over to the other car lifter and we're going to remove that engine bear in mind I have dismounted the drive shafts the gearbox and I've drained all the fluid so it is ready to come out okay so I'm just going to take the engine out of the car it's now in my inventory we're going to double check to make sure we've got what engine it was we just took out it was the AXK okay so we're going to now go over to here with the that AXK and we're going to plonk it onto the engine stand add engine uh, need to make sure we get the right one there's one here which I believe it's this one because this one it is pretty much a, a newly rebuilt one so I know it's going to be this one okay and there's quite a lot wrong with this one and there's that ignition coil which is at 23 percent now when I put it on the engine stand and I come to work on it there's two things firstly uh, that engine coil is no longer highlighted in blue so I unless I made a mental note of it or wrote it down I'm not quite sure which one now needs to be replaced secondly I no longer have access to the job list okay because I put it on the engine stand it's now removed from the car so if you're one of those people that likes to work with that list of all the blue parts being highlighted and having the job list at hand don't go and put this on the engine stand unless you keep a note of every part that needs to be replaced work on it in the car I know a lot of the jobs require you to replace you know uh, pistons and all that good stuff trust me if it's a customer car don't bother just keep it in the car even though it's a bit of a ball ache to you know keep putting the up and down on the ramp on the lifter and all that uh, just just keep it this way as soon as you put it back in the car and you look at it here there you go there's your coil shining back up again telling which one to replace okay I know that was a bit of an extreme example because it was only a core that needed to be replaced but imagine it was two pistons and four spark plugs <laughs> spark plugs and all that good stuff so you know just have that in mind I don't think that is common knowledge maybe I'm wrong now one thing that is a little bit annoying and I wouldn't say it's a bug but it's certainly not not the the best thing in the world let's say we've managed to find ourselves a particular engine block in the scrapyard so let's say we found this i3 in the scrapyard okay it's just the engine block and if we look at all the engine blocks that are available there's two pages okay so th there's well it's actually one and a half page so it's not that many so it's not that complicated but engine block i3 okay oh well, that's a great engine block but i'm not sure what engine i can build with it so instead of saying install the engine because we don't have the engine okay we've only got the block we're going to create a new engine and here we can create whichever engine we choose to here there's actually only two i3s and just to bring it to your attention that i3 engine block will fit both of these but let's just say we have a different engine block that we found in the scrapyard okay let's just say let's pick a, a more uh, one that's a little bit more obscure shall we and then we'll just go and buy that one so engine block v6b oh 
by the way, any of you that watch me on a regular basis, the reason why there's money in this account and different level, this is my second save game. You know, I have the first save game where I went back, started from scratch and worked all the way through with all the jobs orders and everything. This is the one I've been playing forever with more money and everything. This is where I do a lot of experimentation and, and some of the new stuff and yeah, all that good stuff. So don't be confused by, by the level and the amount of cash. I still have my old save game, of course. So I'm going to buy this block. A little bit expensive but anyway just for to showcase this so now in my inventory I have the v6b so I come here and I say well which engine is that for I mean you know I can't just add it because the engine block itself is not is not showing up so I want to create an engine I know it's a v6 but which which one can I create and let's say you don't have a car in mind right now you're just doing it as a project and you say well I want to create I don't know this looks good this v6 dual over red cam Okay, let's do that one then. And you come to here and you want to add, add now part mount, which it would be. It tells you here, engine block V6, VQ, 37 VHR, which is not the V6B. So you'd have to come out and say, well, okay, what do I do? Well, is it, which V6 is it? So it can sometimes, on obscure engines, it can sometimes be trial and error as to which one it will take. I, I know for a fact it would actually take, it's the CHG and the AKZ uh, would fit that uh, that engine block. So if we come here now and we try to add the part, you can see here it's the V6B. Okay, so it's just a word of note. Not all engine blocks are that, it's not that... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for now? It's not that obvious is the word I'm looking for. But most engines actually have a pretty good name to tell you which engine it is that you're going to be building. In some cases, it's color-coded. I mean, come on, blue, and I believe we have a yellow one or orange one here. It's pretty straightforward which ones they go to because when you come to build the engine and say, let me put the engine in, you know, I mean, how, how much more obvious do you want it? I mean, there's blue, I know. Uh, where's the orange one? I think there's a couple of orange ones, isn't there? Yeah, there's the orange ones. Obvious, yeah? The orange engines are going to build these ones. Now, here's something that you may not know about. And it's a bit tricky. I'm not sure if it's a bug or not. You can't add an engine block directly onto the stand unless you've picked an engine to, to fix it, right? As in which one you want to actually build up. But, you know, we said before about this uh, engine block I3. And there's two engines, yeah? Two engines for that. I, engine block i3 there was a turbocharged one and the normal one so let's just go ahead and say well I'd like to build the turbocharged one okay now just bear in mind so I can show you beforehand we have an i3 dual overhead cam turbocharged i3 here okay and we also have an i3 DOC here D -A -D -O -H -C here okay so we already have two engines in stock okay but now I'm going to try and build a new turbocharged engine based on this engine block here. Now look at this engine block here. It's in my inventory. Fine. When I come here and I say I'd like to, oops, I'd like to pick an engine to build, please. I'd like to build another turbocharged i3. Thank you. Right. As soon as I go to add that part, which I know I have it because you've just seen it in my inventory. As soon as I add this, okay, and I think, oh, you know what? Shit, I don't want to build that one. I don't want to build that one. Okay, so we're going to take it off the engine stand. And you say, you know what, I actually want to build the normal i3. I want to build this this one, not the turbocharged. Okay, fine. Let's add that engine block back in. You don't have the necessary parts. So what's happened is, as soon as you go to build an engine, and you've selected it, and you put it on the stand, it instantiates that engine to that engine block so let me show you now I have a turbocharged here I have a turbocharged here which I didn't have before and I have this one here the normal i3 so I am now stuck to building this on that on that particular engine block and if I'll show you I'll show you exactly what I mean if I go to add a part and it shows you all the engines here with all the different parts this only has an engine block. This only has an engine block. This one and this one. There are no other parts. And so now the inventory has been taken away and it's attributed that engine block to that specific engine. So you kind of lose the engine block unless you really wanted to build that particular engine. You might make a mistake. You might pick the wrong, the wrong one. I don't know of a way of changing that around because there's no parts to strip off it. So 
you kind of you don't lose it it's still there it's still but it but it's now classed as a full engine i'm not sure if that's that's the way it should be but either way i don't think many people know that so you know hopefully you won't get caught out by that another little tip uh when you're building engines if you're into building engines in, in a big way which i think i, I kind of am uh, let me just take you into the warehouse real quick so if i go to my warehouse and i pick up uh pre-built engines you can see here i've got a number of engines that are already built and these are generally in full working order uh i've got two of these ss's i've got three turbocharged i3s because i had a plan of doing an i3 showcase and blah blah anyway they're all in stock so there's a lot of money invested in here and there's been a lot of time as well uh, but I find it a lot quicker sometimes if I want to do a, a quick YouTube channel or a, maybe a Twitch stream that I want the engine just to plunk straight in. Because once you've rebuilt an engine one or two times, it, it doesn't make that much interest anymore for, for viewers to, to keep watching you rebuild the engines. So what I do is I'm, if I'm going to build an engine, I often build two at the same time, sometimes even three. And the easiest way, it's very, very simple. Let's just say we want to build that uh, stupid i3 turbocharge another one of these because i don't i've already got three let's just you know get another one as soon as i go into here and start to add parts uh let's say i need this crankshaft i3 for example which i don't have i'll just add it to the the butcher's bill uh you know by adding to the, sh the shopping list fine when i go into here this should be empty but it's not right now uh it wasn't the engine block that i needed was it it was actually this it was the crankshaft so i so simple i do this and i'll buy two of them yeah simple as that so when i come to build the second one and that's sometimes why i build them in threes because when i come to build the next two it takes it, it literally you can build the engine in, in literally three to five minutes depending on the engine uh, and it, it's so much quicker because you've got all the parts in the inventory what i would say is that if you do want to build two or three at a time then spend the time and build two to three at a time don't you know build one and then play something else and you know come back two days later because you'll forget and you'll have all those parts in stock that are just sitting there doing absolutely jack all anyway uh i've covered the engine stand there's probably a couple more bits and pieces that i haven't covered and, and please point out in the comments you know how you basically use the engine stand and how, how you think it works best for you uh but i thought it was just you know pretty good to just showcase this real quick I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some, you know, maybe some information that you didn't have previously. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And once again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for listening. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to drop me a sub, drop me a comment. You know, it will be really, really appreciated and uh, helps me out a great deal. But anyway, I'm off and Jack's out. Thank you very much.